Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, my name's Tom Griffin. I'm the Chief of Police here in the City of Peabody. Um, I've been the Chief of Police here now about a year and a half, and, and I've found that there's some very wonderful assets here in this community. Uh, we have a Brooksby Farm. We have we have a uh, ice skating rink. We have a golf course. But one of our most important assets here is, a, is our children. And I've noticed that the Peabody school system is, is an excellent public school system, and I'm, and I'm happy that we're able to, at the police department here, have three school resource officers that work in that system. And I wanted to introduce you folks to all of them and have them spend some time telling you what they do at the school and, and what their role is up there. So if I can, this is, this is Officer Rick Cochran, this is Officer Manny Costa, and Officer Brian Colella. They each work uh, a different area of the school system. Um, their role up there is, is uh, safety, safety of the kids. Um, they want to establish good relationships with the kids. Uh, and, and the safety is primarily from outside threats. We're, we're, uh, we're not involved with the school discipline up there. That's an administrative function for the, um, the administrators up there. That's something that um, we let them handle. It's anything that might, might create something from the outside that we're primarily worried about. First, I'll have Manny uh, talk a little bit about what he does up at the, uh, up at the high school. The benefit that we have at the high school is that being that they're older, 14 to 18, they're young adults. And with that, we're fortunate to have two security monitors that assist us, and we have a third security that does the front door. So it's a full lock facility. The only uh, access is through a front door. They get a push button to have access. They greet a greeter. Uh, we have Chris Butler up there, and he's there from 10 to 4. And then from 4 to 10, there's a second gentleman that works there. So any night activities, we have somebody always watching the main lobby. So everybody has to sign in, and then they all get a, uh, a badge to go to the main office. And then the security monitors are always checking doors, checking the parking lot. So they assist us in that every day of the safety of the children. Sure. And part of your role is to, is to develop relationships with the kids. Can you talk a little bit about how you, how you go about that? They consider me a sixth administrator. So we have three deans, the assistant principal and the principal. So I'm involved in all forms of discipline with them. And with that, I get to know the students better. Sure. And I do a lot of outside activities. I go to their sporting events. I participate. I'm a, the class advisor for the senior class. So I've developed a lot of rapports with all, all levels, freshmen on up to seniors. Uh, so I get to joke around with them. I get to see them in a different light and act in a different light as just being in a classroom teaching. So it's, it's kind of a unique setting for me. We're a police officer, but they get to see us in a different light and we get to help them uh, with things that they have in their personal lives that are going wrong and we can help them, you know, get their license even. Uh, sure. We can drive sure. them there. And so it's kind of nice. I get to have a really good rapport with almost 2,000 students. And that's one of the goals of, of the school resource program is to, is to show the kids a police officer outside of our normal functioning role where we're, we're pulling people over for motor vehicle stops or coming to a house when there's a problem. We want them to realize we're just regular guys and that if there is a problem, if they do need help with something, there's guys that they can, they, they know that they can approach or that they know in general that police officers are regular guys and not something you need to be afraid of. So that, that, that's why this role in the schools with our guys is very important for the kids to get to know us in that light. So. Now, Brian, you work up at the middle school. What's some of the things that you, you get involved in with them up there? Um, my role at the middle school is the same as Mandy's a little bit, except that there's a difference in the ages, which go from 11 to 14, to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. I work primarily with the administrators um, on their discipline with the kids and meet, you know their kids' activities outside of school as well. Um, my other part of that job is I handle all the juvenile stuff within the city of Peabody, which involves... Uh, all my work over at Salem Juvenile Court. One of the things over there that we like to do with kids that uh, get themselves in trouble is they have the diversion program, which if you were to get charged as a juvenile and you were to get uh, convicted of that crime, you're gonna carry that with you for the rest of your life. Whereas the diversion program on the smaller crimes will kind of keep you from staying out of trouble for the rest of your life and you that won't follow you. Um, but that again, then again, if you go on that diversion program and you should encounter another problem, then you're most likely going to be removed from that. So that, that's a good program that we try to, to send all the kids to if they qualify for it. 
Um, some kids do and some kids don't. So what, what are some of the things? I know, I, I know they do counseling and sometimes they do community service. Is that, is that some of the... Um, yeah, we'll set some kids up because a lot of times the kids have some emotional problems or some troubles at home where they need to counsel and that they're more than likely that if they don't end up into the courts, they're not going to get that help that they need. Sure. Um, so we'll mediate them, you know, and we'll send them in the right direction. So the goal is is to get them the help they need, not necessarily get them involved with the court system. Exactly. That's exactly what it's set up for. So when it's, it's I think it's a low level offenses. Like yeah, it's low levels. Demeanor. If it's a higher level, you're not going to qualify for any of that. But the low level stuff, if we, they'll send you right into so it. So it's it. I think it was described to me once as a, as another bite of the apple. They get a second chance that. They're not going to get arraigned and have that criminal record following them in the future. Right, exactly. They, if it's like we said earlier, if it's a low level, if it's your first offense on something, then they're going to try to keep it in house. And eventually, if you do your community service, which could be something going out, sweeping up some streets, or cleaning up the parks, or something like that, then eventually it's going to go away. And what you were in there for to begin with is almost like it never even happened. And that's good. And that's something that's wrong with the district attorney's office. I yes, yeah, and that's their program. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, Rick works th with all the um, elementary schools here in the city. He does a lot of different programs with them. Um, I know there's a reader program you can talk about a little bit, Rick. Yes. Um, I cover preschool right up to fifth grade, uh, and there's a number of different programs that I work with. I work with a healthy collaborative where they, each year they have an asset building contest where they write an essay about positive assets. And then the third graders do a bookmark program. It's That's a excellent. contest that they do as well. My role in the schools, um, it's more early intervention. Uh, sure. I think when the kids come into school, whether it's preschool or kindergarten, we want their first experience with the police department to be a positive one because with everything that's gone on throughout the last few years, um, you want the kids to feel safe and comfortable sure. with the police yep. department. Absolutely. And I think it's important that the parents get to know you as a person as well, not just the police officer. So um, you do a lot more with DCF and, and those I types do. of I intervention work, things? I work a lot with the guidance counselors in the school, uh, the adjustment counselors and the principals. And I have a mentoring program that we set up with the principals and myself on their recommendations uh, they'll refer a child to me and each week I'll go in and meet with that child and it could be we talk about positive choices they've made or we talk about maybe some negative some. ones that might have got them in trouble in school that week and uh, how to make a better decision yeah, how to make better choices and positive choices oh, that's excellent excellent now Manny at the high school I know uh, last year last summer we did the uh, the dare summer camp program do you want to talk about that a little bit the dare program with the Essex County District Attorney's Office. We've been in place for probably 22 years now running a summer camp and that primarily is fifth graders, incoming fifth graders, only Dan versus sixth grade. It's okay. a little different because they do it at the middle school. They actually, they're the only town probably in Massachusetts still actually has a DARE program. Okay. So they still teach it but it's uh, all our elementary schools get represented at the DARE camp and we meet two weeks, one week, uh, one group and then the next week is a different group. We do various activities, um, but there's like 10 police departments that are there, so they have all the offices. And again, they get to see in a different light. Sure. And same idea as the SRO. Same idea as the SRO. We take it to a summer level of, it's usually kids that might not have an opportunity to, to go to a camp. So we do a bowling, we go to a movie, we uh, go bounce around in one of those bouncy gyms. Sure. And it gives them... Uh, a way to have some fun for a week, get to see police officers, the district attorney. We teach them a little bit about staying off drugs and whatnot, but they get to be friendly with the officer that they're going to see for the remainder. Uh, so it's been a great program that luckily we've been fortunate enough to still have funding to keep it. Yeah, and, that, and that's through some very generous uh, donations from the district attorney's office as well as some private uh, businesses throughout the uh, North Shore area. It's close to probably eight to 800 to 1,000 students that get to be part of that during the two weeks. Well, so it's kind of, it's really nice that they get a place to go. They get some good lunches and again, they get to be with their buddies yeah. and they get to see yeah, offices yeah. from different towns. So we're not necessarily with PBD. We'll have every community as part sure. of our group as well. And we're actually adding community as, communities as we go. We had 
uh, we have to start planning already for, for this, even though it's in late July, early August. And Kristen Freya from the District Attorney's Office does a ton of work with it. And um, we're actually adding Ipswich and, and possibly Linfield as, as more communities to help us uh, run the program awesome. and add more students. And it's a lot of fun for the kids. Um, you know, and, and it's a program that they may not have um, been able to go to a camp at all during the summer. And this is something that's available to them. And, the, and Rick works with the elementary teachers to, to identify kids that are at need that, um, that could really benefit from a program like this. So it's, it's an excellent opportunity uh, for these kids. Uh, one thing we, we wanted to talk about uh, a little bit is more, it's kind of an advisory type of thing for the, for the parents out there, the high school age parents. There's a lot of issues um, that we're starting to see develop, not just, not, not primarily here in Peabody, but throughout the whole, uh, the whole general area. And there's a couple things that have, that have popped up that um, as an educational type thing, we want to make you folks aware of. Um, there's a lot of concerns now around marijuana and, and the potential legalization of that. And, and it's really creating some, um, some mixed messages for, for high school age kids and, and young, young adults. And one thing that, that, that's really become popular lately is called this honey butane. And what, what, what that is is they're taking the marijuana and they're, they're soaking it down with some type of a um, liquid. A lot of times it's the, um, the butane that you might use to, to light a charcoal grill. And then they're heating that up and there's a, there's a wax type material that, that seeps out of that. Um, and, and that's like a high concentration of the THC. And there's a couple of problems with that. Number one is um, when you have that butane on this, um, these plants now, uh, some of that gets into the wax, which is very dangerous if the kids are ingesting that. It also, um, when it dries, the, the, uh, the butane kind of floats off into the air. And if you're heating that up, there's a potential for an explosion. And there's been a number of cases where people have really, really hurt themselves, um, lit their houses on fire by doing that. So what they do with that honey wax now, it's a high concentration of THC, which is the active ingredient in the marijuana. And um, instead of just being a, um, under Massachusetts general law, a class D substance, which is a lower level um, drug substance, it's now considered a class C substance which possession of that, now you could get arrested for, which previously with, uh, with just the marijuana, you wouldn't be. And what's going on with a lot of the people that are selling this stuff is, the, is they're really targeting kids. Um, and, and we want to make that clear. This is what we're worried about is the kids. We, we recently came in contact with someone that was selling it, in, and we have a picture here. And they're actually, they're actually shaping the stuff to look like little Lego men and, and little Christmas trees. So I mean, this when when people talk about legalizing marijuana for medical purposes, you know, somebody who's got glaucoma and they're 50 years old, they're not they're not making little Lego men to kind of convince them to start using this stuff. This is obviously targeted at the kids, and that's that's something that we're worried about. It's not just a problem here in Peabody. These guys have talked with their with their cohorts in in a number of different uh, communities, and it's really something that uh, everybody's starting to worry about. An another thing that we're also seeing. Is, is a situation where um, kids are using cough, cough tablets, cough and cold tablets. Um, they call it triple C. And, and, and what it is is they're taking the dextromethorphan that's in the, by taking multiple numbers of, uh, of, of cough pills, they're um, accelerating the, uh, the dextromethorphan in the, in the actual uh, pills. And it's, if you take too much of that, it causes um, hallucinations and like a dis disassociation with, with reality while you're taking it. Um, it's highly addictive. We're seeing kids at the high school level. We're actually getting complaints uh, from a number of different pharmacies that um, a lot of kids are coming in and shoplifting the stuff. So if you see you, you know, your child with a bunch of cold medicine, you might want to inquire a little bit further as to what's going on because, because like I said, it is highly addictive. And if they're in this hallucina hallucination type state, um, they may hurt themselves, they may hurt somebody else. So it's really a, uh, a big concern for us um, that we want to kind of educate the public about because it's, it's, it's something that could lead to a lot of problems going forward. So um, we just wanted to put that out there to the parents so that uh, everybody's aware these are things we're seeing. And it's not, a, it's not a big problem right now, but it's something that could potentially be a huge problem if it's not addressed and people don't become aware of it.
Um, well, actually, one other thing I thought you might want to talk about, Manny, is the STARS program that, um, that you work with, with NEMLEC. Um, NEMLEC is a regional policing service that we, um, we, we are a part of here in, here in Peabody, and it's uh, involving 60 different police departments in Middlesex and Essex County. And they have a component that's concerned just with the school systems, with school safety, as well as with, uh, with counseling. Um, at the schools when there's when a tragedy um, occurs uh, throughout the area and, and, and Manny's involved in that. How long have you been involved with that Manny? Probably about seven eight years now. Yeah. I've been a member of the STARS unit. So the, the uniqueness of the STARS unit is A you get all access to all Essex County because every department has possibility of being on there and you have school personnel, you have fire personnel, we have FBI on it we have ATF on it, we have bomb squads, and the counseling component has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So when uh, Danvers had their tragedy a sure. couple of years ago, we were involved right from the get-go. So we, uh, we probably had 40 counselors on well, staff that, that day yeah. to talk to the students, talk to the teachers. So we get all the current information that's going around nationwide. We discuss it once a month. We, have, we actually have a meeting today, this afternoon. So uh, a, a big thing that's been happening in mass is the bomb threats at all the yes, schools. Yes. So we have all that information. We get to pass it around. We get to know the inner piece of it. So if it happens in our town, we're ahead of it as sure. opposed to being behind it. But we have access as a, as a NEMLEC community to all those services. Sure. And if there's, heaven forbid, a tragedy, which happened in Danvers, there's, no, it, there's just not enough staff to be able no, to cover no. that on your own. And they're, they're grieving themselves in a situation like that. And their counselors are yeah. personal and, and invested in it. So with this unit, we meet, like I said, once a month. Any issue that goes on with a school, whether it's a bomb threat, a death of a student, death of a teacher, we get called in and we assist that community. We don't take over the community. That's sure. not the job. Not it's to NMLEC assist thing, them yeah. in any way that they need. And that might just be added security at the school, talking to students, just so they feel safe. And uh, it's been, it gets bigger and bigger, it's growing. But I think it's something that's very needed in the school systems. Absolutely. Uh, to yes. know what, that there's, what the current way of doing business and to keep improving it. Yes, and with sure. that, Chief, we can backtrack a minute to when we first started. Way unique here, because we have all three levels covered. Absolutely, Whereas yes. most, most cities don't have that opportunity to meet at all three levels. With Rick being at the elementary school solely, he gets to build a rapport with that level. So when they get to Brian's level, they already know a police officer. Sure, yeah. And then when they get to me, now they've been working with a police officer since kindergarten. Since grade school, sure. And the parents as well. That's the piece yeah. that people don't understand. When I first got to the schools 10 years ago, it was, why is the police officer in this meeting? Right. Yeah. Whereas now, they're almost surprised the police officer is not involved in the meeting. And that's how far we've come along, that it's not just schools and police, that everybody knows that we're a team sure. and we're there for the betterment. Because we have resources that we get to pull, like Brian gets to, he has dealing with the court all the time. Sure. Those are answers that the principal might not know to be right. able to tell to yes. the, the parent. So Brian could come in and explain that better. So with NEMLEC and with us being able to be at all three levels, it's increased what we do. And, yeah. and as you said, it's prevention more than anything. Right. And right. with Rick being at the, the lowest level, it makes our job a lot better and easier at this level because they already know a police officer. Yeah, I think I think that's the idea is to is to steer them away from the system as much as we can. And I think I know you guys have been in place for a long time, and I think that's just a reflection on on the city of Peabody and how important the city feels that the, the schools and the kids are in the city. I mean, we're very fortunate here. I know some departments of similar size that have one or or no uh, school resource offices. So I think it's great. Right. So you know so. No, I mean, Peabody is act they've taken an active role on doing something that other cities and towns don't do by having three guys because yeah. it's it's very cost effective on our end because if we deal with them in a positive light and we <coughs> get to the problems early in early intervention, you won't be dealing with them later on in the system. You know, if you can help correct issues now, early, sure. the thought process, you don't have to deal with them later on down the road. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you very much, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the show today, and have a great day.